you know, I've thought about it and I've decided that I'm going to be frank in this conversation. But just know that it's coming from a place of love. I promise you that. See, I've lived my life so cluttered for so long that it bothers me knowing that there's a possibility that you could be living your life in such a way as well. So today, we're going to be talking about the four reasons why your life is cluttered and can possibly stay cluttered if you don't make a change. And reason number one is you're always on your phone. Now, maybe me saying that triggered you in some way because you're probably watching this or listening to this conversation right now on your phone or some other mobile device, right? And if you are, first off, that's a privilege and it's important to recognize it as so because it means that you have Wi-Fi and a connection to the internet in order to stream this video or listen to this conversation. So that's a privilege, right? But see, constantly being on your phone is exactly why your life is cluttered. Let me explain what I mean. When you're always on your phone, it means that you're distracting yourself from the things that you could be doing or that you know should be getting done. Take, for example, the physical clutter in your life, right? And this is easy to visualize. Maybe you have too many clothes or knickknacks spread throughout your home or random things thrown all over the place and just taking up physical space in your life, right? Now, in the back of your mind, you know that there's something you could be doing about this clutter. You know that you should be donating and decluttering the things that you don't need and find a home for the items you want to keep. But you don't do these things. You don't find time to do these things. You don't make time to do these things because you claim that you don't have enough time. But the truth is, is all of your time is being taken up because you're constantly on your phone, scrolling through social media and consuming content that isn't necessarily adding value to your life, right? But if we're being honest, the same thing can be said about the mental and emotional clutter in your life as well right, which are two types of clutter that I believe are often overlooked in favor of the physical things that we can see in our life. But again, your mental and emotional clutter, in my opinion, carry a much heavier weight on you and your life than the physical things in your life do. I know from my own experience, anytime I've wanted to avoid digging into and dealing with how I felt, I would always reach for my phone, right? And I would find something to do that would take my mind off of things, right? Maybe that was scrolling through social media or watching a funny video or playing a game that I downloaded because it was advertised to me on social media. But whatever I could do to pass time until those thoughts and feelings passed by, I would do. But what I've learned is that regardless of what it is in your life that you're trying to get rid of, avoidance is not the best solution. In fact, Avoidance isn't a solution at all, right? And it really is the problem. And a part of that problem is because you're always on your phone. You see, the thing about technology and the fact that these devices keep getting smaller and smarter, faster, more convenient to use is that it's easier to get distracted by them. You know, a fun activity that you can try is taking a look at your screen time on your phone. And I'm not sure how to check this on an Android, but I know on iPhone, all you have to do is go to your settings and then click screen time, and it will show you exactly how much time on average you spend on your phone a day. And if you want to dig deeper than that, it will show you exactly what apps you spend the most time on, how much time on average per day you are spending on those apps. And really, this is a great indicator to let you know whether or not you're always on your phone or if you're not always on your phone, right? But the truth is, is that if you're always on your phone, you're not going to have time to declutter your life. You're not going to have time to dedicate to removing those items that aren't adding value to your life. So my suggestion is to put your phone down, right? It's okay. It'll be there. You don't have to be on it all the time. Just put it down and take care of those important things so then you can enjoy some of those more fun, luxury, silly things like social media, funny videos, or a silly game. Reason number two is your identity. You know, sometimes we live cluttered lives because so much of who we are is wrapped up in the things we own to the point where our identity is starting to be defined by our possessions, right? And this is never a good thing. See, if you're someone who lacks an identity, who doesn't quite know who they are or what they value outside of the things you own, then I'm talking directly to you because this was my life, right? I was in your shoes at one point. You know, I've shared this story before in the past, but in case you're new here, 
in my teenage years, in my early 20s, I had a persona that I clung to, right? And that persona was Mr. Smooth. And Mr. Smooth was someone who was identified and shaped by my possessions. Not who I truly was, but by the things I owned, by the things I did, by the things I bought, <laughs> right? That was what shaped who I was and who Mr. Smooth was. But it wasn't me, like I said, right? Now, my life was so cluttered at that time in my life that I couldn't see who I was if I really wanted to. And that says a lot, right? That says a lot about the things I bought, the things I held on to, uh, why I held on to these things, why I clung so tightly to my possessions, because they defined me, right? They helped me feel like I was who I was supposed to be. But see, I have a question for you. If you can relate to this in some way, I have a question for you. If you had nothing but yourself, maybe the clothes on your back, right? But if you had nothing but yourself in a mirror in front of you, who would you be? Who would you be? Think about that question, ponder on it for some time, journal about it, pray about it, but really think hard about who you are without your possessions. If all you have is yourself in a mirror in front of you, who are you? You know, and it's not an easy question to answer. Sometimes it's, it, it may take you a while, right? But really understanding who you are outside of your possessions is key to living a clutter-free life because it's, it's going to help you live a value-filled life rather than a stuff and things-filled life. And that's the key right there, right? That's the key right there. So really think about this. Who are you if you didn't have the things you own, the clothes on your back, your car, if all you have is yourself in a mirror in front of you, who would you be? Now, reason number three is you lack clarity. Now, don't judge me for this metaphor that I'm going to use, <laughs> but the poet in me wants to go there. So I'm just going to flow with it, right? I'm not going to overthink this. Lack of clarity to me is equivalent to a lack of oxygen. And let me explain what I mean by that. Oxygen is one of those things that's needed for life, right? You need oxygen to breathe. Now, sure, you can go a couple of minutes if you wanted to by holding your breath and not breathing, right? Maybe even longer if you train and practice, right? But at some point, you're going to have to take a breath, right? You're going to have to breathe in order to survive in life. Now, if we look at clarity from a similar lens or through a similar lens, Clarity, from my perspective, is required in life. Now, sure, you can navigate life without clarity on your goals and the things you want to achieve and who you are, right? You can navigate life like a zombie and just go through the motions. You can do that for a short period of time. But at some point, you are going to seek clarity. At some point, you are going to want to know what is important to me. Why am I living my life this way? Should I be living my life this way? And if not, what direction should I go? And next. Now, the common denominator between a lack of clarity and why your life is cluttered can be a few different things. But a couple of things that come to mind for me is that you lack clarity around your values, what's important to you, right? Or you lack clarity around why what's important to you is important to you. Or you lack clarity around understanding what it takes to live and to live out and prioritize your values right? You kind of see a pattern here, how everything results back to your values. And that's because I've learned in my life that without a strong sense of what you value, your life is going to be cluttered and chaotic. It just, it's, going to, it's just going to be, right? There's no way to live a clutter-free life, uh, a purpose-filled life, if you're not clear on what you value. So my encouragement to you is get clear on what you value. I have a core values worksheet. If you want to check it out, you can download it for free on my website at ronaldabanks.com slash values. But more than that, just really think about what you value in your life, what's important to you, and if whether or not you're living out those values, if you're living in alignment with those values. And if you're not, that's a clear sign that you are living a very cluttered life, that your life is going to stay cluttered for a very long time because you're seeking that clarity in stuff and things rather than in values and morals and what you believe to be true or how you want to live your life, who you are and how you want to live out and 
show yourself to the world, right? So just think about your values. Like I said, download my core values worksheet if you need some help. But prioritize what's important to you, why those things are important to you. And that's going to help you get rid of the clutter in your life. Now, reason number four is you overconsume. Now, I think this is a very fitting conversation to have, especially with the holidays right around the corner. My wife and I were just talking the other day, and we cannot believe that next week is Thanksgiving already. Like, where's time going, right? And then a few weeks after that, there's Christmas, and then the New Year's. It's just, man, slow down, right? It's crazy how fast time is going. But even without the surge of holiday spending, because this conversation is relevant regardless of what time of year you listen to it, and that's because overconsumption is a huge issue, right? Check this out. The average household has roughly 300,000 items in it. 300,000, right? That's crazy, right? When you think about it, that's a lot of stuff. But there are only two real reasons how and why you can accumulate this much stuff in your house. Reason number one is that you're holding on to and keeping everything, right? And reason number two is you constantly, constantly, constantly overconsume. You're buying things that you don't need just because they're on sale, just because it's the holidays, just because you saw it advertised to you, just because you think you might use it one day. You're overconsuming. But here's a truth for you. It's impossible to declutter your life if you constantly have more coming in than what's going out. Now, with this in mind, it begs the question of what is enough? What is enough? Now, I can't tell you what enough is for you in your life, but what I can say is that minimalism, intentional living, purpose-filled living, building a fruitful life, right? All of these things look very different for each of us. And regardless of how you define these things in your life, enough is always going to be less than you think it is. It's always going to be less than you think it is. Enough is always going to be less than you think it is. And the way you figure out what enough is for you is you focus on what's important to you. Like I said, it goes back to your values. Are you prioritizing those values in your life? And if you're not, how can you prioritize your values? How can you focus on what's important to you? Because to be honest with you, I want you to experience the benefits that I've experienced from this lifestyle, from owning less, from minimalism, from living a clutter-free life, right? I want you to live without the stress, without the overwhelm, right? I want you to be able to enjoy the things that matter most to you and to choose to own less of what doesn't, to choose to want less of what doesn't. And the only way you can do that, the only way to do that is to put down your phone, to get clear on who you are, your identity, right? To build clarity across other aspects of your life and to stop buying things that you don't need. Stop overconsuming. It's not worth it. Keep growing on your journey, friend. Keep learning. Always stay true to you. And um, I'll see you in the next conversation. It's going to be an interesting one for sure. <laughs> Peace.